this is a project where I made a prototype walking stick. I was going to make 38 of these for a family reunion that's coming up, but after making this first prototype, I kind of backed off on that. I'm not sure just how many I'm going to make, but it, what I'm doing is taking some six-quarter mahogany stock, cutting it into strips so that I end up with a cross-section. Um, I didn't cut that many of these to begin with. I think I made maybe, uh, you know, five or six. And I cut them down to be about two feet, two feet in length. The object here was to make an upper part of the walking stick with a, a header on it uh, that would then have a bottom section that would screw into it. And the bottom section would be adjusted for the particular height of the person. Here I'm cutting some paduk uh, sections about six inches long. Uh, I took these over to the drill press and basically drilled a hole through those and that was going to base that was going to be for the lanyard that would be put through the header on these walking sticks. Uh, the walking sticks were then turned on a lathe to what I thought was a, a nice shape and then fastened on to the upper section of the walking stick with a dowel. Uh, I did a little, it doesn't show in the, in the videos here very well, but I did do a little off-center turning at the top of that first section to put some grooves in it to make a little better fitting uh, handle to hold on to the walking stick. Uh, to get the appropriate length of a walking stick, you're supposed to stand with your arm to your side at right angles and then measure the distance from your outstretched hand to the floor. In this case, it was 41 inches for this uh, one person that I was making this stick for. And here you can see I'm drilling the hole in the uh, paduk, what I call the toppers, I guess, for the walking stick. These go above the 41 inch uh, level. And I set this up on my drill press with a stop so that I could run through a bunch of these. And I, I don't remember how many I did, but there was maybe about 20 or so of these uh, toppers that I drilled at one time. Here you can see a stack of them on the drill press. This Paduk is beautiful wood. Uh, here's one of the finished toppers that I'm holding in my hand. Uh, I just picked a shape uh, because this really won't be held in the hand. It's, a, it's just a topper on the walking stick. Here's a section of that uh, mahogany. Uh, I took the sections that were like this and, and basically turned them into a shaft that was about an inch and an eighth in diameter. Uh, this is really straight grain, so it uh, it turned very nicely. Here, as you can see, one of the sticks. Uh, these are this is a little longer because it was uh, set for the for that top height that I wanted to achieve, which was about 24 inches. And here's a close up of the topper. I laser engraved the person's name on it, and then that will attach to that top part of the shaft with a dowel. The bottom of that shaft, uh, I had a, drilled a little uh, 3 8 inch uh, hole in it, and then I secured a, a screw fitting that I got from Lee Valley that allows me to screw it into another section on, on the bottom of the walking stick. Uh, here's just some video of the turning of the uh, bottom section. Uh, so this was cut to length so that when this fastens to the top section of the walking stick, it gives me 41 inches from the ground up to the person's hand that's holding the, the walking stick. I used a, uh, a spindle roughing gouge to do this. I think it was about three quarter of an inch. And use the technique, anchor bevel cut, ABC, that uh, you hear so much about when you're uh, turning with, with gouges on a, a spindle stock like this. And I was turning this at, oh, probably about 1,200 RPM, not, not real fast. And that's a no-no. You should not change your tool rest while the machine's running. But I'm very careful when I do that because I know that I do not want to get my hand stuck between the piece and the tool rest. 
Now here I've changed over to a finishing, uh, round finishing carbide tip tool. Kind of go over that first part of the shaft and get it smoothed out a little bit. Ultimately I sanded this with uh, a 120 grit sandpaper and then worked on up to 320, I think it was like 150, and then worked up to about 320 grit sandpaper with this, which was plenty smooth enough for this particular application. Here I'm working on the top part, or excuse me, I should say the bottom part of this section of uh, the walking stick. Uh, here I'm going to be cutting the taper on that end, uh, using a bedan for that. That tapers about 12.8 degrees and goes uh, up the shaft about an inch. It tapers down to the end and there's a brass piece that gets epoxied uh, over that end. And that brass piece holds the different uh, tips for your walking stick. The, in this particular case, I think I got this from Lee Valley. There's a rubber tip and a stainless steel point that you can interchange. And it took several measurements here to get this right. I didn't uh, leave the video running for you to watching all this measurement that I did, but it took me a while to get this taper the way I wanted it. And then I finished up shaping the shaft so that it ended up about uh, one and eighth inch uniform over its length. I really loved working with a bedan. It's just a very friendly tool for you know reducing the size of a spindle and and even uh, using it to just kind of smooth out some areas on the spindle. The mahogany was really nice wood to work with too. It was uh, it's really dry, but uh, just super easy to cut. Now here I've finished turning that shaft and I applied two coats of uh, black dark walnut uh, a stain and now I'm going over it with some friction polish. Turn the speed up on the shaft and uh, then took a piece of this uh, Scott towel and burnished it until it got hot and uh, worked the uh, friction polish in end up with a really nice surface. I'm not sure on a walking stick, uh, you know, most walking sticks are pretty crude and aren't finished a, a lot. I mean, they don't put a lot of finish on it. I might should have put some wipe on poly on this. I don't know what uh, the weather will do with this. And it may be that the wipe on poly would have been a good top coat on this to protect it. This is a prototype, and I am going to send it off to my son, and he's going to try it out. Uh, the one thing that bothers me a little bit is the connection between the upper and lower parts of the walking stick. That's going to be the weak link, and I hope that will hold up. So I'm told him to give it some rough use, and uh, let's make sure it's going to hold up. Now, on the end of that shaft, I countersunk and then drilled a hole. This is the tapered end that the uh, brass tip is going to fit on. And this is another shot of that uh, recess with the hole. And this is a little jig I made that fits over the end of the dowel and or the shaft and allows me to drill the two, the countersink and the hole that I need. What this allows me to do, as you can see in this picture, is to the left, there's actually a brass insert down in that shaft and that screw, that uh, male thread you see screws into that. When the two things go together, you don't see the joint in the shaft. And here I am holding the walking stick. And that's basically where the handle is, where you would hold the walking stick. There you see it in all its glory. Here I'm taking the rubber tip off of the uh, brass tip and installing the stainless steel point. Uh, for rough ground, you'd want to use the 
the point possibly in some cases and the rubber is going to be for other types of surfaces that you might be walking on. I went ahead and uh, super glued a little compass on the top and I add a little feature to it. Uh, there's a leather uh, piece of leather that goes through the hole to make the lanyard and it has a nice uh, little bead on the end of it. So if you get a chance, uh, give us a thumbs up, like the video, and uh, subscribe to our channel.